When, when Peter speaks, these are ones that, that you wrote here. When Peter speaks of suffering, what kinds of suffering is he referring to? In other words, is there um, a kind of suffering that is unique to the Christian or is the focus on suffering that everyone experiences uh, and the issue is our response? Um, I'd have to comb through carefully just with this question in mind, but I think virtually all of Peter's references to suffering are suffering brought about by uh, the circumstances of being a Christian rather than cancer or car accident. Now, having said that, wanting to be fair to the text, the question remains, are there principles in responding to that suffering that also are obligatory or helpful in relationship to all suffering? If I walk home and have a heart attack or, or have a stroke and half my body is, is, is not useful anymore, or walk out in front of a car and get hit and can't walk anymore, or somebody shoots me with acid and, and I can't see anymore, or, I mean, I'll, I'll, whatever. All those are, are kinds of suffering that people go through. And my answer is, yes, this book is filled with things that would help you suffer. But if, if you force me to go to texts that deal with all kinds of suffering, I'd go to Romans 8. Romans 8, 18 to 25 is my go-to text for universal suffering that refers to everything that futility has brought upon the fallen world from floods to volcanoes to pestilence and disease and famine and nakedness and anything that brings misery into the world or into a human life is dealt with in Romans 8, 18 to 23. And the principles there are that the same, the same way that we bear that suffering, we bear persecution. So don't think that when you're reading a text that only deals with persecution, that it's not relevant for your other kinds of suffering. I'll give you just one simple example. Um, if you read a text that tells you to rejoice in suffering, chapter 4, verse 13, rejoice in your sufferings uh, so that, for righteousness' sake, so that you will be able to rejoice when uh, His glory is revealed. Well, now that, you might say, well, that only applies to persecution. So I can't rejoice when I get cancer. I can't rejoice when these other kinds of things happen to me. That would be wrong. Think of it this way. If, if Paul took heart from the fact that he was thrown in prison for his faith, but what if in prison he gets an infection? There's vermin down there in the dungeon and they get in his skin, and the rest of his life, he struggles with intermittent fevers and rashes. Is that a disease like cancer, or is that suffering for righteousness' sake? And you can all think of, of instances like that where you might be robbing a bank, and uh, well, that... that, that that's another situation. I'll leave that one aside. <laughs> so my answer is, yes, I think First Peter is almost entirely talking about, and maybe entirely talking about, persecution, but I think it is all relevant to how we respond to God's sovereign dealings with us in our many varied... Oh, no. I just thought of chapter 1, verse 6. Yeah. In, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while you um, endure various trials that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, might redound to praise and glory and honor. Those various trials, there's no, there's no specification there. Those are just, it's like gold being put through fire, whatever the fire happens to be. Okay, thank you, Lord, for that little reminder.